Hey guys, uh, today we are going to be talking about inequalities. So these are a bit of the harder inequalities uh, that you would encounter in HSC or whatever exam that you're doing. And okay, so we're going to start off with the absolute value ones and then we're going to move on to these three. Okay, so those are the questions I'm going to do. Okay, first question. 2x plus 5, absolute value of it has to be greater than 3. Now, I think most of you jump into this question and take the 3 and the minus 3. But I want to I want to go slowly and explain the intuition behind it. So now if you know that 2x plus 5 is positive, if you know that already, what you can say is that 2x plus 5 is greater than 3. Easy. But if you know that it's negative, what the absolute value sign is going to do is going to take the negative of the negative number. Right? So if it is negative, if it is negative, it's going to do this 2x plus 5 is greater than 3 okay because we're pretending that the 2x plus 5 is a negative number all right so in this case it's it's a fairly straightforward thing to do you're going to say 2x is greater than uh, minus 2 and then x is greater than minus 1 over here now as soon as it's a negative number over here it means that 2x plus 5 is less than minus 3 because you can remember, as soon as you divide or multiply two sides of an inequality sign by a negative number, the sign switches. All right. So now 2x plus 5 is less than negative 3. 2x is less than negative 8. x is less than negative 4. Okay, so those are your two solutions. Okay. Now, I can also do this a bit graphically. So... I'll, I'll do that as a, as well if, if you want to visualize what's what what I just did. Okay, so the xy plane. What I'm going to draw is the y equals two uh, x plus five. So not the absolute value one, but y equals two x plus five. In fact, you know what? I'm going to do the absolute value one. Two y is equal to two x plus five. All right. Okay, so you know your intercept is five. You know rise or run is two. So you'll find that the x and the y intercepts are that's 5 and this is going to be minus 2.5 okay now if if i if i had to draw just y equals 2x plus 5 it'll just be this straight line right as soon as the absolute value comes into play what's going to happen is that the negative numbers are going to reflect above so whatever's negative over there it's going to take the positive number of it that's that's all that the uh, absolute value operator does Okay, so that's y, that's x. All right. Now the question is the 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 whoops. What we needed to find was when it was greater than three. All right. So to find when it's greater than three, what I'm also going to draw is the y equals three line. So that's y equals three. So graphically, whatever was anything above that line falls into the criteria that we need is greater than 3 and then we just need to find the x values so that's how you do it graphically and to find the x values that's what I've done up here x is either less than minus 4 so what that 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 point over there is going to be minus minus 4 and that point over there is going to be minus 1 x is greater than minus 1 okay so so you can see x is going this way over there and x is going this way for the, for the left hand one okay now for a slightly harder question 2x plus 5 is greater than x plus 1 okay, part 2 absolute value of 2x plus 5 I should say is greater than x plus 1 okay now I'm not going to jump into the question straight away I'm actually going to state this if 2x plus 5 is greater than zero, which is equivalent of saying now if you manipulate this, um, you'll find that two x is greater than minus five, and x is greater than minus two and a half, or two point five, whatever you want to say. Um, then we're going to have simply two x plus five is greater than x plus one. Okay? Easy. And on the other hand, if 2x plus 5 is negative, or 
I should say less than or equal to zero, which which implies it's, it's simply the opposite of this, right? Which uh, you can do this straight away if you, if you know it by now. So it's, oops, that should be two and a half. It's less than 2.5. Then, then I have minus two x plus five is greater than x plus one. Okay, so let's let's work on let's work on okay, I'll work on this side first. This is good this is saying two x plus five is less than so switching the signs again is less than minus x minus one, right? Taking the x is onto this side, this, this will give me three x is less than minus six, which means x is less than minus two. Right, so we have x is less than minus two. Now over here we said x is less than minus two and a half. Over here we're saying x is less than minus two. So it seems to be perfectly fine. Oh, sorry. Okay, L let me let me draw a number line. Let me draw a number line so it'll, it'll make be a bit more clearer to you. So we have zero right there. Minus one, minus two. Yeah, minus three, minus two. So a condition, our condition up here, is saying that x has to be less than or equal to minus two and a half. When we solve this, when we go through all these steps, we end up finding that three x, sorry, x is less than minus two. So this is saying x is less than minus two, right? So that has to be the case. But the answer that we find out is saying x is less than minus 2. And so we can't, this condition up here must be satisfied, right? If it wasn't satisfied, I couldn't actually take the negative sign over here. This negative sign over here, I couldn't have taken it. Because if it wasn't less than uh, minus 2.5, it meant that x was greater, which means this part would have been positive, right? So I'm, I'm coming back to here. So if it was positive, I would have come back to here. So no, so it ha this is a strict condition. And this one is saying x is less than minus two. So minus two is starting from here and going this way, all right? So for this solution, the only thing we, can, we must have the common one, the common between the two, and end up saying x has to be less than or equal to minus 2.5. Okay, so it's, it's a bit different to what we did before. We can't just take the solution that was given over here. We need to compare the two and think about what is my common, what is my common area. So that is really crucial to inequality questions. What is common? So in this section, less than minus 2.5 was my strict condition, right? So like a closed ball over there and the other one that we found out the answer was starting from minus two it went this way okay so we need to find the common one okay let's let's go back to let's go back here so this is going to say uh 2x so bringing the x's onto one side i will have x alone has to be greater than minus four right so, okay, I'll draw another number line over here. So this one is saying x has to be greater than minus two and a half. And this is saying x has to be greater than minus four. So again, another number line. So, okay, let's say that's minus four, right? So that was my answer. It had to be greater than minus four. And then my condition said x had to be greater than minus 2.5, right? So, so here now the, again the common the common area is right there. So again my answer changes to saying just simply greater than minus 2.5. Okay, so greater than or equal to my uh, ooh, sorry simply greater than minus 2.5. Okay. Now, here's, here's a really tricky part. So, 
I want you to think about these two solutions, right? One saying x is greater than minus 2.5, the other one is saying x is less than or equal to minus 2.5. Okay, so, so just think, think about that. What does that mean? Okay, so what it means is that x is in all real, right? So if x is less, if it's greater than minus 2.5 and also less than or equal to minus 2.5, it means that x can take on all possibilities, right? So I hope that makes sense. Okay, last question. x plus 2 over x plus 5 is greater than 1. Right, so let me write down the question. x plus 2 over x plus 5 is greater than 1. So how do we solve this? Now remember remember I said that when we were dividing or multiplying by um, a negative number that the inequalities change, right? So that's a, that's a real, really big problem over here because x plus 5 can be a negative number. By the way, before we begin, we need to say that x cannot be equal to minus 5. Why? Because if, if it's minus 5, it's going to be 0 over here, and you can't divide by 0. Okay, so we need to start off by saying that. Okay, uh, now to get around the whole dividing or multiplying by a negative number, because this remember this can be a negative, uh, the denominator can be negative, the way to the way to get around it is that I multiply, I want to multiply this question by x plus 5 all squared on both sides. Why am I multiplying by x, five, x plus 5 all squared? Because this number over here is a positive. So when I multiply by a positive number, the inequalities don't change, right? So. What I, what I end up with this side is x plus 2 times x plus 5 and on this side I have x plus 5 all squared. Now the really bad method of doing this is to jump in and start expanding this entire equation. Don't do that. Okay, so what, what, I'm, what I'm going to do is actually, you know what, to make it slightly interesting I'm going to multiply this by 2. Okay, so this, is, this, is a bit, this question is a bit too easy otherwise. So I'm going to multiply this question, question by 2. So I have x plus 2, x plus 5, and then just multiply this by 2. I'm going to take everything onto one side. So that you'll see soon why I'm, I'm saying don't jump into um, expanding everything out. So this will become minus 2 x plus 5 all squared is greater than 0. Okay, the reason is if you can see, I can take x plus 5 out as a common as a common factor, right? So if I take x plus 5 out, what I'm going to end up inside my bracket is, so I'm going to end up with this x plus 2 minus 2 times x plus 5 is greater than 0. Okay? So again, just manipulating this, this is going to end up become, becoming minus x 2 minus uh, 2 minus 10 is going to become minus 8, right? It's greater than 0. I can, I can try to solve this inequality or what I can do is I can take the minus out from here which will give me x plus 8 inside. Right. Oh, by the way, this should be sorry, minus 10. Yeah, sorry, that's right. Um, so I can take the minus outside, which will give me x plus 8 in here, and then I can divide it by the minus sign, right? So I can divide both sides by minus sign. The only thing that's going to happen is that this is going to switch. So this will become x plus 5 times x plus 8 is less than 0, okay? Because I divided by a negative number, this is going to be less than 0. Okay, all right. Now what do we have over here? We have a parabola, or quadratic, whatever, whatever you want to call it. So the my favorite method of uh, solving parabolas is to sketch it out. My two roots are going to be minus 5 and minus 8. And it's a smiley face parabola. Okay. 
So the question is, when is when is it negative, right? When is it negative? And to answer that question, we we look at the, we look at this graph over here. If you can see, it's only negative in this section, right? It's only negative in that section. Everywhere else, it's positive, right? We're talking about below the axis over here below the x-axis that's when y is negative right y is negative y being negative means this is less than zero okay so our solution is going to be x is going to be between minus 5 and minus 8 and so that is our solution Okay, so if you, if you had if you had any trouble, just just leave any comments, uh, leave feedback, which I would really appreciate, and thank you.